Hello Degenerates and welcome to another Duck Hunt Guide. This time we are going to be talking about the most important aspect of Duck Hunt's game, which is going to be the can. Now the can is easily the most misunderstood aspect of Duck Hunt's entire kit, and today I'm going to clarify everything you really need to know about it to use it in neutral. Now this can is actually the most important part of Duck Hunt's kit, and the most important thing to learn after learning his movement and then just generally how to use his normals. Uh, without the can, he's like not really a good character, but with the can, this is how he actually becomes like a pretty amazing character and viable character. Um, quick overview is it is one of the best uh, ground control, air, well, best uh, zone controlling tools and assist tools out there. It's also one of the best tools to have to use in disadvantage. I would say even more so than uh, snakes grenades. And um, the other thing too is it's just, it has like such a wide use of versatility that there's no right or wrong way to, well actually no, okay. There's some better ways to use can, but it's just really flexible with the ways that you can use it, that you can really create your own style that can psych out each opponent that you face. And generally the way that you play around your can or you play with the can will determine what type of duck hunt you have and how most people are gonna recognize you outside the color that you use for him. Um, so, quick things to note about Can, of course, Can is a frame 1 option. So what does frame 1 mean? Frame 1 means that you can get out of every single attack there is in the entire universe, just as long as if. You press the B button, see, there's the Can, there it is, and then you both explode. So this is something really good to know for um, disadvantage situations, and let's say like your opponent's like at 180 and it's like okay i just need to blow them up i'm not gonna die so that way it's like oh they're coming in with like a dash attack or something then just do that and then you win so really good thing to know about there it's like if um generally you know duck hunt's really good at racking up damage not so good at securing the kills in certain matchups and situations but that's kind of like your old reliable and especially since uh damage got buffed really good in this game it generally will kill earlier unless you get it to be really stale um, after that, uh, the other properties that you should know before we get into the rest of the guide, um, if you heard my beginner's guide, one of the major changes to the can was that the direction they get sent in is no longer determined by the side that you are facing when you launch the can, it is de determined by the side of the can that they are hit on. So for in this case, because he was hit on the left side of the can, he was sent to the left, and since he's going to be hit on the right side of the can over here, he's going to be sent to the right. Um, by knowing this, you'll know exactly how your combo tree is going to work against the opponent you're fighting, and it can determine what you're going to be using next. And it'll help you understand certain situations on whether you guys get sent in the opposite directions or if you guys get sent in the same direction. Because there are a few rare instances where, yeah, you both get sent in the same direction like that. Generally, the best way to do this is if you land right on top of them, and that way you just end up being on the same side of the can. The last property we're going to be talking about is exactly how you control the direction that the can is going to shoot in. Um, the main basic easy rule for everybody to understand is the direction you hit the can in is going to be the direction that the can is going to be shot at. So for example, if I hit the can with a forward air, it's going to go forward. If I hit the can with a down tilt, it's going to go forward. But if I hit the can with a back air, then it's going to shoot back to me. Now, there is one thing that you'll notice that will drastically change your idea of that, which is any move that is up tilt or up air. The real property that determines what direction the can is shot in is actually based upon the angle of the move. An example of uh, up tilt, it is slightly more than 90 degrees, so it's um, like 92 or 96. And so because of this, when you hit it, it's going to be sent behind you. Same thing with up air, it is more than a 90 degree angle, so that way it is gonna go behind you in this respect too. Uh, with back air, it is not over that 90 degree angle, and that is the main reason why it is sent in this direction, or if not, it's a way of beyond it where it goes back forward facing duck hunt. Uh, so those are the main properties that you need to know about with uh, controlling and manipulating the can. Okay, so the first things we're going to be talking about are the main general ideas that you want to use with CAN, and probably the most misunderstood aspect of the CAN itself, which is what 
do you want to really do with this? Most people, when they see the cannons, they just want to keep hurling at their opponents endlessly, and they just keep want to keep blowing them up over and over and over and over and over again, and they think that's going to be the best thing to do. Well, for the most part, that's not really what you want to be doing until they're really off stage, so that way you can kind of harass them and go for some other setups. The main thing that you really want to do is focus on using this as controlling a zone or using this as an assist. So what do I mean by zone control? Uh, when I press the B button, I'm able to ping the can up and move it forward. So I'm able to cover the area that's above over here, or I'm able to cover the area, and basically everything under this curve over here is what I'm able to control. So if, for example, if I ping it very lightly, then I'm able to bounce it across the ground. If I ping it a lot, then I'm able to jump it in the air and then progressively move it faster due to the way that the gravity works on this. So those are kind of the general things you can do. Um, the thing is, if you sit back and you let the can do all the work, then you're really only using like 20% of the potential that this character has. The real potential comes from the fact that you can actually control them both independently of each other and then just go for all sorts of setups so off of it and just do like this really cool like zone control where you're kind of controlling two characters at once. And that's where Duck Hunt really shines, just because he's able to cover so many options and he's just able to just kind of suffocate really what you do and sort of post these RPS situations where depending on what the opponent reads of the other opponent will determine who comes out on top. Uh, those type of situations will only really happen once both people really know how the character functions and especially the can functions. Um, as I just mentioned, um, you know, the way, the way that the RPS situations come up is your opponent can't hit the can back at you, um, but likewise you are able to hit the can back at the opponent. So this way it's never that your opponent has a distinct advantage over you. So in this case, let's say, you know, I'm going to hit uh, Wolf with my can or I'm sending it to him. What he can do is he can go ahead and down tilt it. There we go. And that is an F smash. In this case, I did hit the can right before it hit me, but yeah. So I'm able to hit back the can before, um, hit back the can so that way we can kind of play a game of hot potato with it. So that way it's not like any one of us is really at a disadvantage unless I'm stuck in this animation. He happens to hit it back into me before I'm able to act. Um, the only time that should really happen is if you're kind of using it like way too close to your opponent. Like if you did something like this, your opponent can obviously just do anything they want like up smash f smash you or like f tilt you and just put you in a really bad situation you want to make sure you're at a good safe distance where you're able to cover yourself before that before they're really able to hit you if you read them like going for something like a dash attack and you just jump can and then just cover yourself then that's perfectly fine as long as you're just putting yourself in a situation or in an area where you don't think they're going to be uh, that's the perfect time to launch the can uh, the main thing that you don't want to do is you don't want to be extremely obvious with how you're summoning the can. Like, let's say every single time that we're this far apart, I always full hop can, and I do it every single time. My opponent catches up into that, and then, like, you know, he starts jumping and upbearing me. So then that way, okay, that's no good. I need to change up my strategies. Or in this case, I could go for something like a wave bounce can, where I automatically give myself a lot of space to protect myself, and I mix up the area that I'm able to go in. So that way, instead of just doing full hop can... Instead of doing full up can, I do a wave bounce can, and then that way I'm able to fake him out, so that way he might go for a back here where I'm actually safe, and that way I can hit him to that, and then do all sorts of combos off of that, and then put myself in a really good position. Those are the main things that you really want to be thinking about whenever you're utilizing this character in neutral. So one of the things that's extremely important to talk about was, um, I believe it was patch 2.0, where they actually reduced the faff on Duck Hunt's can summoning animation. So it actually got a 4 frame faff buff, so this means he's able to act 4 frames faster than he was before. Uh, because of this, you're actually able to la act a lot quicker and just get way more things off of it and make yourself a lot safer. So that way you can jump earlier, um, if you somehow do like a short hop can, you'll be able to shield basically right as you land, which is really good. Um, so sort of almost like an auto cancel in a way, so that way you can do that, F tilt, and then whatever happens afterwards happens, and then you can just do that. And the reason why that's significant is it just encourages you to play with your can a lot more often. 
and you know one of the big ways that you are encouraged to play with it a lot more is because of one of the significant changes to can which is being able to hit it in the air um, now the reason why this is important is it actually completely changes up the dynamic of how this character works because you know now you're able to juggle the can back and forth with your opponent if they decide to hit it in the air um, the other thing too is that it just completely changes the way that you're able to even follow up with this character so let's say for example we start in a neutral position on the stage and let's say I want to get an auto setup so what I can do is jump, fair, ping, and then I already have my setup ready. So I can just basically control how much zone that I want to cover and exactly, um, um, exactly what I want to get off of that immediately, just a lot quicker. So if I hit my opponent like uh, you know, let's say I hit my opponent pretty far and I want the can to be there immediately, then I'm able to do that a lot quicker than I was before. So that way, I can hit the can over there, they rush under it, then I can just do this, back throw them, and then just throw them right back into the can too, or back throw them off stage to get them off if they're at that distance. So that's a really important change with it. And the other thing too is there are just so many different other ways that you can interact with it. Uh, one of the things that I believe I showed off in the ledge trapping guide was, you know, being able to up air the can so that way I do this and then now it's immediately covering that. Uh, the other reason why up air can itself is really good is if you're covering a juggle. So let's say your opponent is, you know, they're blasting up in the air and now you have them in a juggle situation so you jump, up air the can, um, they didn't get the final hit. You have to make sure the final hit hits. So that way you're able to cover behind you and you're able to cover this area over here. So then that way it's harder for them to escape you if they try to return to center stage and you're able to cover the areas if they go back to ledge or if they try to like land right behind you too with like fair, another up air or a bear as well or even an air so that way you can kind of soft hit them into the can and then do some more shenanigans off of that. Your possibilities with that are pretty limitless and like let's say you also do a jump can and your opponent starts running under you. One of the things you can do now is actually down air it so then that way you can cover that too. So, you know, if they get a bad read, yeah, so do down air can, you kind of have to follow it. Then you're able to just kind of follow it over there and then just do whatever you need to do. So it seems like when you do uh, down air can, it will, it will shoot behind you depending on which one you hit first. I believe if you hit the first hit, that's what's going to send it backwards. So it shoots forward yeah so if you hit it with the first hit of down air the can will shoot backwards if you only hit it with the second hit then it'll it'll ping forward so good things to keep in mind and depending on what side of the can you hit with a uh, uh, down air will determine if it'll be sent forward or backwards so if, if i hit it on this side then it'll go forward so things to keep in mind if you're landing with it um if you hit it with nair there's two hits to it so obviously you have the weak hit and that'll still be sent back to you. So this is this is a pretty good thing to do if you want to cover behind you as well. Um, and if you hit it with a strong hit, oh. <laughs> you hit it with a strong hit. It's not going to go too far, but I think just perfect enough to like really get a throw combo off of it. Uh, so my personal favorite ones to do it with, obviously, fair is really good. So that way you can get um, across the stage basically immediately. Up air I absolutely love for a lot of juggle situations, um, just because you're able to cover behind you. So now. Um, yeah, it's just easy setups like that and then down here is the one that I'm trying to use more So then that way it's like let's say I'm trying to land Then um, it makes it a lot easier for me to just guard myself from above uh, from below me, so You know if I'm able to ping it behind me if they're back to the ledge and over there Then I can shoot it towards them and prevent them from following me um, Or I'm just able to just send it straight down and then once it gets there then I have that can um, I have that can covering me, so then that way it's harder for them to just follow. So, all those things are really good. Of course, the other one that's really good too is just back air can, just because you're able to do, um, you're just able to have the can get sent back to you. Obviously, it's best use for this is at the ledge, so then that way you can just cover every get up option with it, because you can cover normal get up and attack with it. So, really, really useful for that. The main issue that you'll have to, with using a set ledge is it's kind of hard to gauge whether you're going to hit them on the left side so they get sent off stage or on the right side where they get sent off, uh, on stage. So depending on where their invincibility is, it can really kind of vary. 
but obviously you can use this in neutral too, um, should you have the time to set it up. I think the best thing for this is, yeah, do a short hop, uh, do a short hop can toss, and then, um, short hop can into back, our back air, and then you'll, you'll be able to get that one pretty consistently. Now, one of the best strategies for using can is to actually play with it behind you. So what do I mean by that? Literally playing with the can right behind you. So if I, let's just pause it right here and let's slow down the speed. So with me standing like this right here in this position, I'm able to react to everything that Wolf is doing and I can box him out. If I'm able to get a grab, then I can throw him into the can, which is um, one ability that I'll have available to me. Um, let's say he reads my spot dodge and then he just hits me with the jab. Then I'm able to have the can come up behind and punish him. Or if he does something more like a dash attack, then his attack should end right where the can is, and then that way I'm just able to blow him up for it. So basically, by having the can right behind you, you have one of the best assists to come in and save you at any moment. So like if he does an attack in this specific moment right here, then he's going to get blown up, and if it's on my shield, then you know I won't get damaged at all. So those are that's the reason why that's something really good um the other thing too is when you have it in a zone like this and like let's say you roll behind him now we sandwich between the can and you so because of that you're able to just kind of cut off a lot of options so now it's a little bit harder for him to retreat because i can immediately cover this and i can cover that so his options are either to roll behind the can or press forward because if he attacks the can then he's leaving his back open i can grab him or i could just like up smash him very easily and like either put him in a bad situation or um just straight up kill him depending on what his percents are so one of the goals that i always like to do is just kind of look for the setup so then that way he's gonna have a really hard time like just choosing on what to focus on um because basically he focuses on you the can is still chasing him focus on the can then you've got free reign to do whatever to whatever you want to him and the other thing too is like let's say oh he whiffs um let's say like you know he's with he whiffs like a let's say like he does an f smash and you know it it whiffs so he does this and then i'm able to just kind of get that grab in combo into the can as long as i'm playing on point and then just do whatever i want off of that the main thing that you need to be thinking about with the can is what is this limiting my opponent to do? Um, so over here, um, since it's being pinged this way, if he tries jumping and approaching me, the can can catch him very easily. So um, that's another thing you can focus on is like just throwing it forward and then just getting behind him. So you, that way you're able to force those sandwich situations. And the other thing too is like um, if you're retreating away and like let's say I do this, then he has to deal with this thing also going forward as well, so he can't exactly get under it. It's going to be following him that whole time. Um, so it's definitely a good strategy to use, like, let's say if you're getting pressured by, like, a rushdown opponent, to have, like, that type of thing there to guarantee your safety. Where versus, like, let's say I throw this way, and, like, uh oh he ran right under it. Now he can hit me with whatever he wants. Um, that's, like, the kind of situation you want to avoid. Uh, the other thing too is, for example, if the opponent is coming down and they're just like jumping a lot, and I have this can over here, well if he's in the air over there and I'm like covering this with up air, his area that he's able to go is extremely limited, and he's going to want to avoid it. So the other thing too is like, let's say that I throw this can over here, he landed right in between it, then I can also throw out that F smash too to cover that area that he's landing. So you've got to think about like everything that this can can do. So. You know, if he's trying to come down and I throw this can out here, he air dodges it, then I can throw out like a neutral air here to like get a good, long lasting, consistent hit. And you know, when that this neutral air hits, I might be able to get something like a, um, I'm able to get something like a um, up smash or even like a tech read off of it. Like that, well, not that exactly, but you know, into like a jab, maybe a grab. Just depends what really what I have. Um, what I have the time to do, and de depending on the percent. At this one, um, soft nair is not going to cause a knockdown. You have to get into like 100%. Uh, but yeah, those are the things you really want to think about. Think about how this can trap your opponent when they're trying to land. What are the best aerials to use to cover it, and what are the best um, punishes that you can get off these situations too. 
the other thing too that's um, really useful is like forcing roll reads. So let's say that I have this. He doesn't want to deal with this can. A lot of times um, your opponent is just going to end up... Um, there's going to be a lot of times where your opponent's just going to end up like shielding in this situation. And what they're going to want to do is roll. So like, you know, oh, scary can over there. Let me roll behind. I've told one thing you could do, but that could lead to more damage. Um, but another one I think like a lot more duck hunts like to use is like, let's say... He rolls in from this situation, and then you go for like a down smash afterwards. If you, especially if you're closer to the ledge, that just puts them at like such a low horizontal angle. That there's a couple of characters that'll mostly auto kill. A little max one of those characters. We're kind of obvious there. Um, and I think even Wolf. Wolf ha has a pretty hard time recovering from something like that. But you know, his side B at least goes a pretty good distance. So as long. As long as he's not too far away, you should be able to make it back. But yeah, no, generally, if you're going for those roll reads off of having that cannon there, they roll in, down smash is a really good option to catch them, and then just like start your ledge guarding sequence there too. Uh, roll reads, roll, just roll forces is just one of the best things with it. So when you're in neutral and they're in shield, one of the things you want to do is launch the can and see how they act. Do they like to spot dodge? Um, if you approach with it, do they generally like to shield and roll behind to get around it? Or do they like to shield and roll away? Um, look at where they are in the stage and just figure out what their habits are. Generally, each opponent's going to have their one strict way they want to react to the can. And the way they will react to it will depend on how much that they understand of the matchup. Um, if they keep holding shield, generally that means they're probably pretty inexperienced in the matchup from what I've found. So that way you're going to be able to get a lot more grabs. Like let's say I throw out a can and then there, throw. And then boom, you're able to get a lot off of that. Um, that'll tell you that. If you throw out a gunman and they immediately just shield and they keep doing that consistently, that means they don't know the matchup. Um, if you see them shielding a lot of clay pigeons, that means they don't know the matchup either. Um, if you see them like actively trying to hit the can away, that means they at least understand some form of what Duck Hunt can do. And if you see them like jumping forward, that's another thing. If you see your opponent just like trying to reflect it all the time, then that means they probably don't really know what they're doing. <laughs> uh, the only time that reflect is really good is like, you know, let's say I like to do this for some odd reason. Um, then yeah, reflect's pretty good. Or, or if they reflect it when you're recovering, um, that's like the only time Reflector is really a good viable thing. Because otherwise, Reflector is mostly just going to be baited out by Duck Hunt. So like, let's say, oh, he reflects there. Um, okay, that's great. He hit it. But now I have free reign to hit him too because he's kind of stuck in that animation. Um, and you're just kind of able to do what you want. All right. One of the last major things that I really need to talk about is exactly how can works against a projectile. So when you throw out a can, you can obviously hit it back and projectiles are no exception. However, when it gets hit by a projectile once and it keeps getting hit by it over and over again, the can will not move. It will act as a permanent wall that you cannot phase in any way, shape or form. It is the perfect counter for anybody just kind of trying to spam you out with a, with a projectile. Um, another property that I can quickly show off here is the gravity that's on the can. So I believe I talked about this in the beginner video, but every single time you hit the can, it's going to fall faster and faster and faster and rise less. So an important thing to keep in mind against this is when I throw out one can and I don't shoot it at all, when he shoots it, it's going to hit me. However, if I ping it once and he hits it, oh wow, it's actually going nowhere because it's actually, I think the hitbox is doing it. Um, so if I... If I do this instead, it's just not going to come back and hit me. So that's that distance. In this case, it's actually just going nowhere. <laughs> Sometimes it just automatically doesn't want to go anywhere. I'm not exactly sure why. But as you can see there, because it got shot so many more times, it didn't go nearly as far as it did before. Um, when it got hit by that laser and after I reset it. Um, after he hits it with the laser once and you shoot it again, that's when it'll move again. So before, um, if you want the can to stay there, make sure you don't hit it at all. So that way it just stays down like that. But keep in mind, the second that you shoot it, it's free game to start moving again. So 
important thing to know about that property of the cannon. It's really good against characters like Samus just because it normally blocks all missiles, it'll block all charge shots, Mewtwo, Shadow Ball will literally never hit you. Um, so it can kind of take place of that wall of gunmen. Gunman's obviously a little bit taller for so for certain things, Gunman's a little bit better. But consistency against those projectiles that'll kill you, this will do you just fine. Alright, so the last thing that we're going to be talking about is uh, the fact that can is not a move that exists in a vacuum. You have to remember, Duck Hunt has two other projectiles he can use. He can use Gunman, and he can also use Clay Pigeon as well. So uh, the reason why this is important is because you can control way more area than just having a can up here. For example, I can throw out a gunman, now then I can have a can out, so the air is controlled, the ground is immediately controlled by the gunman as well. And you just have to look at this, so... Let's get a... Uh, real quickly, let's make sure we put this back in the frame by frame. So let, let's look at everything that's going on in this frame right here. So I have a can that's controlling the air. I have a gunman that's getting ready to shoot. And this is the entire space that I control at this very moment. So now this can, it like let's say Wolf just dropped his shield. He can't jump, there's a gunman there. One thing he could do is reflect, but with that I can just jump. I can jump to this zone over here and then just come down and fare him. So then that way once he gets like stunned by both projectiles hitting him, then um, I'm just gonna be able to immediately counteract that with my fare coming in. Um, and also I can just ping the can to go over the reflection too, so that way even the can doesn't have to deal with it. So you're able to just like lock them down so much once you have everything coming get together in conjunction. However, the one big caveat you need to remember is if you throw out a clay pigeon, you cannot shoot the can until the clay pigeon is gone. Um, this can become especially problematic if you, do, um, if you do a hard toss clay pigeon and it doesn't land on anything. That's the soonest that I could actually start shooting the can again. So I did a hard toss. Now that's the soonest I can shoot the can. So every single time you throw out a clay pigeon, that is a second you can't control the can. Um, of course, the clay pigeon does have a lot of really good uses, but you want to be able to control your can in neutral way more often. So like, let's say I have a setup like this and you know I was able to hit uh, Wolf over there. The second that I control, I throw this out, I make can uh, completely useless so that's not really something that you want so if I do this so if I have a setup like that then okay that works out pretty wonderfully because clay pigeon is going to combo into can and then I can do some cool shenanigans off of that but generally it it whenever you do this like can becomes useless you don't really want that to happen unless you have like a very specific setup in mind so like honestly the sandwich one's not too bad so that way, you know, if I know it's going to hit his shield or something like that, um, then that way I'd be able to follow up with the can behind him. So like, let's say this hit a shield. Okay, now that, that hit that. But if it hits a shield, generally what it'll do is it'll bounce up behind him. And then that way he'd be locked in there. So make sure I can do a very good short example of this. So let's say can is over here. Shielding wolf. All right, that was not good. <laughs> Can over here. Shielding wolf. Clay pigeon. Now I have can that comes that way and then it can punish him. So like that, there's a good example of how you can ha set it up properly with the can behind you. But of course, this is assuming that he locks himself into shield against the clay pigeon um, and all that stuff. If he rolls past, if he just simply rolls past the clay pigeon at that point, then like you're, you're just kind of fucked there because you can't get the, you won't be able to have the can to cover you. You're still going to be in the Clay Pigeon lag animation, and he's just going to get a free punish on you. So, you know, Clay Pigeon and Can don't really go well together, but Gunman and Can go hand in hand. So by having, like, let's say I wave bounce a Gunman and I do this, that way I have a safe zone to just entirely launch my Can. So if they, even if they have a projectile, I'm able to get this out and everything, and then um, I'm able to just do whatever I want with the Can afterwards and all that, and... You know, we're looking all peachy. So what you really want to focus on when using the cannon neutral is do this. Have your gunman out so you know exactly what you can do. Also, I remember in the gunman video I did talk about um, you can have the gunman shoot the can too. So that way you can automatically have like a lot of high zone covered immediately. 
So I do this, can. And then there, that that goes, that already like covers a, a huge area behind me. So if I don't want to focus on um, like um, moving the can myself, one of the things you can do is jump gunmen, and then um, I'm able to immediately control that. So if you want to do this, jump can, gunmen, or what you do is jump can, then jump forward gunmen, and then you're able to like start going afterwards, and then you'll have the can behind you too, and you don't really have to worry about manipulating it. You can focus on controlling the dog, and then wherever your opponent ends up, they'll end up there. But that can is going to control that zone that is covering behind you. So, except for that gunman. For the black gunman to work, remember, you're going to need to shoot it like that, and then that way he's going to be able to shoot it because he shoots too high. All right, and that just about covers everything about... Uh, Duck Hunt's can in neutral. If there's anything that's not super clear, please let me know. Um, something that I do want to do in the future is go over a video of Rido's to really show how he's using these projectiles in neutral and how he's doing a good job with them or how he's doing a bad job with them. Um, when you watch some of Rido's performances, he's not always doing the best he could possibly do it, but he generally likes to keep it really, really simple and sort of easy for himself to understand and just control the opponent. Um, if you want to see more complex examples, you can look at a, a player like Guy. Guy always likes to do a lot of crazy things with this can, or Bisel. Bisel does some of the most insane things you'll see with Air Can. And if you want to see kind of more innovation with it, he's a very good person to check out on Twitter. Fortunately, it doesn't really seem like he goes out much of tournaments, but regardless, his usage of um, Aerial Can is probably among the best of all the ones that you can find of the Duck Hunt players out there, just on any platform. So definitely go out there, experiment with how you like using the can in neutral yourself. And don't forget your defensive options like shield can, as I've shown, that is a very strong, powerful thing to do. Um, the other thing too as well is um, don't forget about using your up air can to control behind you or using up tilt can as well. So then that way you can cover space behind you as well, especially cover platforms too. So like on battlefield, really, really good thing to use. Don't forget you can also cover your landings by down airing the can, so then that way um, you'll have like a really good um, consistent way to just get to like just kind of land. Um, and then of course always work at your can setups at the ledge, but as for neutral, do that. Control their space, really learn what their habits are when you place the can in certain areas, and then just go for the maximum punish that you can possibly get in order to finish them off. So guys, hope you found this video helpful. Like it if you did, dislike it if you didn't. Leave a comment on what you want me to clarify more about this, and um, you know, I will run another poll to determine what video I make next about Duck Hunt, so that way I can really figure out what you guys um, really want to know more about this character. Uh, I do want to cover Shield Can more in depth, just because there is a lot of nuance to that, and especially with the way that it works in matchups. So that's one of the ones that's very important. And the other thing that I can do too is I can try to do more creative combos on that. But I think if you guys vote for that, that's probably something that won't come until probably late August. Uh, probably until August, I would say. Um, the other thing too is I am going to be branching out into doing more different types of videos. Um, if you guys don't know, I am a huge big uh, theme park fan. And I'm going to be doing a review on Hagrid's uh, Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. So if you are interested to hear my thoughts on that and more theme park content that will be coming to this channel in the coming months. Um, but yeah, so that was Canon Neutral. Please let me know what you want to learn more about the can. If there's anything unclear, I'll do my best to answer it there. And if it's something that I have to do a little bit more for, I'm definitely going to make a full video on it so that way I can clarify things. Um, and before we go, we'll just show you how good this is on a stage like Battlefield. So up till can already covered so definitely don't ignore how good of an option that this is you're just able to immediately cover everything with it um, and you know if you ping that way you can cover the other side with up air so definitely utilize your up tilt and up air cans as best as humanly possible guys thank you so much for watching and as always make sure you guys take care of yourselves